So what's going on guys, Kate's here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the best Elder Scrolls Online tier list in 2024. So this game in general has a bunch of fun classes to play and we have a very unique variety to choose from. But the big question is, which classes are actually good for the specific activities that you want to do? So I've done a bunch of testing and here are the results. So if this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So then moving over to the first S tier class and it is the Arcanist. The Arcanist is a flexible class with its own unique feature, the Crux system. Specific Arcanist skills will generate the Crux while others can consume it to strengthen their effects. Utilizing the Crux is vital for an effective Arcanist build but also makes the class dependent on the system. Several strong Arcanist skills use your primary resource which makes them great for both stamina or magic based builds. This class relies a lot on magic based abilities and can make strong damage dealers in every setup. The Arcanist can also shine as a support class thanks to its many buffs and debuffs. Tank and healer Arcanists have also several tools to assist their group and can be an asset in harder content. If you enjoy magic based damage in ESO then the Arcanist is one of the best classes to pick. Their crack system is great for creating strong damage combinations but also makes the class dependent on it. So our main gameplay will revolve around generating crux to consume and deal more damage or get additional effects. Overall the Arcanist pros are that he has skills that uses the primary resource, we can do great combos thanks to the crux system, we have very strong magic damage and if we want to go as a support then we have good buffs and debuffs. And then the cons are that Arcanist is very dependent on the crux generation and in the end game builds he will run into magic sustain issues. So then for the next class we have the Templar and we will put him right in the S tier. Templars make excellent healers, strong magic and stamina damage dealers, but mediocre tanks. The Templar has access to mostly magic based spells and several support skills to assist you and your group. This is a very good class for solo PV gameplay and quite beginner friendly especially if you are into healing. Even though Templar is not the best class for tanking, it is still the closest to a Paladin-like class in ESO, thanks to all of its healing and support spells. Both stamina and magic damage dealers rely too much on puncturing strikes and its morphs for damage. Like the Arcanist, Templars deal magic damage as well and offer several strong AoV skills for damage or support. Overall the Templar pros are that they are excellent healers, they can do decent magic and stamina damage. Then as well they have a lot of magic based damage and support spells. They are the best for AOV based builds. As I've mentioned this is the only class that you can create a self healing paladin build. And finally this class is great for solo gameplay. But then on the other hand for cons, the Templars are very mediocre tanks. And they depend too much on one offensive skill called the puncturing strike that pretty much every single build has to use. And then for the last and final S tier class and it is the Sorcerer. Sorcerers make great magic and strong stamina damage dealers. They can deal shock damage and have the ability to summon pets to do their bidding. Sorcerers can play with or without pets and in general are easy to learn. When using their pets the magic sorcerer can be very beginner friendly and I would say that he is one of the easiest classes to start with. Magic sorcerers are great for solo PvE gameplay as well. But then stamina sorcerers are slightly more difficult to master and rely too much on weapon abilities but they can be very strong as well. They are powerful as DPS characters and very good in support roles so a tank or a healer thanks to the vibrant shroud and the Idric refugee skills. The only drawback for the sorcerer class has it that it relies a lot on its shields to survive harder content. This affects magic sorcerers more and of course depends on your level of expertise. So then overall the sorcerer's pros are that he is beginner friendly, you can summon pets permanently to help you in combat. Then as well we have strong shock AOE damage. This class in endgame has strong damage potential in both PvE and PvP. This class as well is powerful for solo players. And then finally he can be even good in support roles. And then for cons I only have one which is that sorcerer will need chills to survive harder content. So he is a bit more squishier than the other classes. So then for the next class we have the Nightblade. 
which we will place in the A tier. Nightblade is the rogue slash assassin type of character. He is the only class with an ability to cloak in game. Nightblades make great magic and stamina damage dealers, as well as decent tanks and healers. Although he is one of the hardest classes to learn and the least beginner friendly. But with that said, playing a Nightblade can be very rewarding for experienced players. Thanks to their stealth capabilities, they are also perfect for gank aka surprise attack PvP builds. This is a popular class because of their stealth and roguelike elements. Their arsenal excels in attacking and executing single targets. So if you are into stealth PvP, then the Nightblade class is the best option for you. Thanks to the Shadow V disguise, you can stay hidden and strike at the right moment. Overall, the Nightblade pros are that he has good stealth skills that can easily run into or escape fights. Then as well, this class is great for solo gameplay. We get to use hard-hitting single target abilities and executes. And then finally, Nightblades have the strongest ganking PvP builds in the game. And then the cons are that they are hard to master, so not beginner friendly. Then as well, they rely on proc skills slash light attacks weaving a lot. Then you have to use stealth to survive in PvP. And lastly, by using this class, you are mainly limited to only PvP content. So then for the 5th class we have the Warden, which we will put right in the B tier. Wardens make decent stamina and magic damage dealers, as well as tanks and healers. This is an easy class to learn, with access to several helpful heals, buffs and debuffs. This class's frost based abilities can help you to create fun frost warden mage and a frost tank build. Wardens will need a frost staff to achieve the best damage. So overall he is a good class for every role in PvE or PvP gameplay. Very good for solo PvE class as well. Beginner friendly thanks to their several support skills. Their bear ultimate is great for damage but can act weird sometimes. They can mix and match stamina and magic based skills with success which will make them perfect for hybrid builds. The Warden is amazing class if you are fond of frost damage. This is the only ESO class that can create a reliable frost DPS build. The Warden class major drawbacks are that their bear ultimate and the need of frost staff to deal their best damage. The bear ultimate is strong but requires 2 slots to work and he doesn't have any other reliable alternatives to use. So overall the Warden's pros are that they are excellent healers, great tanks and good damage dealers. Then as well you can create a frost mage or frost tank builds. This class is very strong in both PvE and PvP. He is as well easy to learn with access to really good buffs and debuffs. And then finally, the Magic Warden is great for crowd control in group PvP. And then for cons, they will rely too much on the Bear Ultimate for good damage in PvE. And they have to use the Frost Staff to deal good damage. So your choice of weapons are quite limited. Then for one of the last classes we have the Jaga Knight, which deserves to be placed right in the B tier. Jaga Knights make excellent tanks, very strong magic and stamina damage dealers, but poor healers. This is a quite sturdy and beginner friendly class, especially if you are into tanking. This class has access to fire, earth and poison damage based skills. Each element suits a specific role better and will help you to create an appropriate build. In general, fire goes with magic damage dealers. Poison for stamina damage dealers and earth for tanking. This class can also be great choice for damage over time abilities. The magic Jagonite is the closest to a pure fire damage in ESO. But as I've said, this class doesn't make a good healer, because they simply lack the appropriate skills to perform well in that role. Their skills are quite resource consuming, as well as they have to cast their ultimate often to restore resources. Which by itself is not a big problem, but still, you will have to take this aspect of the class into consideration when creating your character. Finally, both melee based or magic Jagonites perform better when they are in melee range from their target, which might be a problem if you wish to play as a ranged magic DK. So overall the Jagonite pros are that they make excellent tanks, they can be strong magic and stamina damage dealers for both PvE and PvP. Then as well, this class is sturdy and beginner friendly. You get a big variety of spells to choose from, they are good for damage over time based builds, and then lastly they are as well great for solo PvP gameplay, thanks to the fire, poison and earth skills. And then finally for the last class we have the necromancer, that gets to be placed in the last C tier. 
The Necromancer has access to every elemental damage type in game, so fire, shock, and ice, as well as poison and disease damage based skills. It can also summon minions, like the Sorcerer, to assist in combat. However, the Necromancer's minions are not permanent, because they only last for a few seconds, and then they will require significant micromanagement, which makes this class harder to learn. Necromancers make great tanks, healers, and decent stamina and magic damage dealers. This class has access to several support skills that will be very helpful for every single role. Necromancers make decent damage dealers, but with a complex rotation because of the constant minion resummoning. You also get access to several types of damage and their status effects, so overall this class is quite good in support roles too. In general, the Necromancers pros are that they are good at dealing damage, but will require practice. Then they are good at tanking and healing, they get access to elemental, poison and disease damage skills, they can summon minions to attack and heal, and lastly they have very flexible gameplay. But then on the other hand for cons, they can summon permanent pets like the sorcerer. Then as well you will have to use a lot of micromanagement because of the minions. Then on top of that, this is a quite hard class to master, and then lastly they will rely too much on the blast bone skill, and that's about it. So with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good ESO builds or guides that you would like to see in the next video, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell, so this way you could support the channel and not miss any more amazing content. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I will see you in my next video, so take it easy, peace.